Be in prayer for a lot of people that are not able to be here. The whole Hernandez crowd, uh, Bonnie, and a bunch of other people have just got the yuckies. So be praying, if you would, for them and their inability to get out and around. And I know they'd like to feel better. Uh, one request, if you're able to meet that, is we keep an orange cone on the corner across the street because the school buses cut too close, dig a hole, and it's a mud pit. And so we put a cone here, but we've already had three cones stolen. <laughs> Figure it. So if you have a cone laying around that you would like to bring over, please do it. Oh, Robert? He's got a cone. Okay. You, you got a cone and you got chicken, so you got it all. Okay. Very good. Well, as you can tell, this is a very special day. I'd like to invite Mary Elizabeth to come up. And Mary Elizabeth will be graduating shortly. And you Yay. go ahead and say what you want to say, and then I'll come up, okay? Good morning. I want to thank all of you for supporting me all of my life. When I graduate, I will attend Gwinnett Tech to study medical sonography. I want to read a verse my parents clung to when I was four. And as I read them today, they are perfect for me to cling to as well going into adulthood. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, Whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Philippians 4, 6 through 8. Thank you all so much for your prayers. On behalf of the church, we'd like to give you this to celebrate your graduation. We are so proud of you. You're a blessing. I want you to go back to your thank you. I love all the kids that have ever come through this church, but there's something about Mary Elizabeth that always has been for me. Oh, what a blessing. Um, I would like to go ahead and give a little bit of a report on Camp Nathaniel. And is Leah not here either? Not yet. Oh, okay, all right. Uh, we had a great time last week. The camp staff is growing cr like crazy. There are over 30 brand new workers within the last year or so that are late 20s, early 30-ish. And uh, the excitement and the energy, it just makes it so wonderful to be able to be up there. Do be praying for all of them. Their camp year starts very, very soon. And also pray for Jeff and Beth. They are our supported missionaries. And also Jeff is the camp director. So we had a wonderful time and uh, just wanted to let you know, obviously we made it back. After seven and a half hours is a long time to drive one way, but we did it. So thank you for praying. We thank you for each one. So thank you a lot. Um, I want to also say that uh, pray for Daryl in a special way. He, uh, his grandson got married. They had a wonderful experience, but I think Daryl was walking on uneven ground and he is sore today. So remember Daryl in prayer. Also, we've been praying especially for Judy Casey. Thank the Lord that you're out of the hospital and back home and everything's going well and that's a joy. So we have been praying for you. It's good to have our son Andy and granddaughter here. Nice to have both of you. Uh, let me just check down here. We want to also remind you that next week we will have no Sunday school because Dan Nave and his new bride 
will be with us for Sunday school and the morning service. Um, that is on the, uh, uh, well, I don't know what day it is, whatever day. Yeah, I, I got it mixed up. Then I want to remind everybody that Memorial Day was established not in honor of veterans, but in honor of those that served their country and didn't come home. So be praying for the families as they are now just re being reminded and they're also hurting. Dave? Let's ask the Lord's blessing on our time this morning and praying especially for Mary Elizabeth as she graduates, officially graduates this week. And then for those who are not feeling well this morning, um, and then also for our um, for our missionaries and for many of the upcoming elections and things that we have going on in our country. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning that we can come before you. Lord, that we who have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb have the right as your sons and daughters to bow before you not because of anything that we have done, but because of your mercy, you have saved us, as your word tells us. We thank you, God, for your provision in our lives. We do pray earnestly that your will would be done on earth as it already is done in heaven. And we look forward to that day when we will be with you forever in glory. I pray that you would help us to live lives before others Again, not for our own glory, but to show how you have changed us and how you are continuing to change us into the likeness of Christ. Please help us, God, to be good servants of you. We come before you and ask for your watch care over those who aren't feeling well. So many are sick uh, and struggling with different maladies. I pray that you would be with them. We pray for our brother Daryl. Um, thankful, so thankful for the healing that you have already done in his body. I pray that you would just be with him now. Uh, and continue to help him. We pray as well, thankful for Judy, that she is back with us and, and that things are, are okay there. We pray for traveling mercies, thankful for traveling mercies for our pastor. And as the ministry happened uh, there, it came to Nathaniel, thankful for that ministry and thankful for the ministry that mom and dad had in their lives this week. Thank you for bringing them back safely to us. For those who will be traveling this week, we pray for your wedge care over them. We pray for Dan Nave and uh, for his wife as they come to be with us next week. We pray for our missionaries. Wherever you have placed them, we pray for them in a special way this morning. Give them strength. Give them mercy. Give them the right things to say as they share the gospel and as they encourage one another. We pray for all of our brothers and sisters in Christ here in Decula and in Atlanta and in the United States and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Some who are being persecuted, Lord, we pray for them in a very special way. We know that you have them in that place for your honor and glory, and so we pray that you would give them strength, that you would give them uh, help to bear up under those things, but then also that you would embolden them to share the gospel and that your will would be done. We pray for our nation, for our leaders, so many that do not recognize you, Father, but we know that you have put them in place as your word teaches us. And so we pray that you would be with them and you would help us to honor them because it honors you. We pray for upcoming elections, knowing that your will would be done. Help us to be willing participants in that process and to do things according to your word and to vote according to your word. I pray as well, Lord, for... Um, the, the strife that we see in, in the world, especially for the children of Israel, the war in Gaza. We pray for both sides, Lord, because we know that they need to turn to you. We know that you will eventually save the children of Israel, but we pray for that, all of the people that are affected by it. We pray especially for believers in that area and in Ukraine and in the other place where there is strife, that your word would go out mightily and you would be honored and praised. And now, Lord, as we, as we come before you to corporately worship, we're thankful that we, of all of your creation, have lips and tongues to give you praise. May we do so from hearts of thankfulness 
and love for you, knowing that you've showed us that love first, and that's why we know. That's why we know it, we can sing of it. May you be honored and glorified by how we give this morning. We also pray that you would help us as your word is open to glean from it what you would have us to so that we can be better servants of you. It's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. As we begin to worship the Lord in song this morning, I want to, to think about things that we are going through. Mary Elizabeth has a huge change that she's going through right now. Moving from high school into college, and not to increase your anxiety at all, that's not my point, <laughs> because I know you're going to be great, but there is some anxiety there, isn't there? You know, in what, what's coming next? Some of us are going through things, and it would be easy for us just to turn to ourselves and to say, what am I going to do? What we must do, if we trust in Christ as our Savior, be redeemed by the power of the blood of the Lamb. We must rest fully in God's sovereign will for our lives. God is there every step of the way. Our Heavenly Father will not leave us. The Lord Jesus Christ is with us. He has given us his Holy Spirit as a down payment on what is to come for all of eternity. That should encourage us. And even though it may not be fun what we're going through, we can definitely rest in the confidence that we can lean on the everlasting arms. Would you sing with me? Would you stand and sing with me, please?
and these songs were picked this morning. I, I actually wasn't thinking about graduation or, or anything when I selected this set of songs, and yet the message that I did see in them carries through that no matter what we're going through, we have a Savior, we have a God that is with us and that we can depend on because he is faithful, he is unchanging, he is holy, and he loves us because we trusted Christ as our Savior. The song we're going to sing now, now normally we would take up our offering at this time. This morning we're going to go ahead and just encourage you that if you come ready to give, that you would put it in the box in the back. Maybe some of you give faithfully online, and we appreciate that, absolutely. We are thankful that we have the opportunity, though, to pause now. We're going we're gonna to ask the Lord's blessing of all of the gifts that are given, no matter how they're given, because it is a privilege for us to be involved in the work that God has called us to. He's given us everything that we have anyway, and it's good to be reminded that it's all his, and yet we then give to him. And we give to him gladly. At least I hope that you give gladly. We should give joyfully. And so let's thank him now for the way he supplies things for us. He supplies things for this ministry and for his work on this earth. Our Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the privilege that it is to be singing your praises this morning. To be singing songs that remind us that you are with us and that you, um, that you guide us and direct us and that we can rely on you. Lord, help us not to forget that all the things that we have, yes, we work and yes, we've received um, resources and monies and things like that, but it's because of your graciousness that you have provided all of that for us. And so we thank you for that. We thank you for the privilege that it is each week to set aside some or to each time we give to set that aside to be involved in your ministry in this place. We're thankful for your provision for us we're thankful for your provision for the ministry. And no matter how the gifts are given, we pray that you would be honored and glorified by the attitude of the giver and that we would be able to continue to do ministry in this place as long as you would have us to. We continue to give you praise now, Lord. For even as we go through sorrows, even, even as we go through hard times, we know that our soul can trust in you. We commit we continue to commit this time to you, Father, for it's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. Lord, from sorrows deep I call when my hope is shaken, torn and ruined from the fall, hear my desperation. For so long I bled and prayed, but come to my rescue. Even so, this thorn remains.
Before the message this morning, we're going to sing that song, He Will Hold Me Fast. As we do, our child can be dismissed to Children's Church this morning. Thank you, Sammy and Annie. And one announcement that I was just reminded, due to some of the illnesses that are going around, Refreshed Tomorrow Night will be moved to Sammy's house. So instead of going out to Emily's house, where there is death at the door. <laughs> we'll be moving on, and the ladies will be meeting at Sammy's house. If you have questions about where she lives, ask Sammy. She'll be glad to let you know. Um, I am really appreciative of our ladies' ministries. It is such a sweet time. Um, I understand a great time was had at the fellowship yesterday. We're thankful for that, and then also for the Monday nights of Refreshed. Please continue to pray for that. There are people that are being reached by that that are not part of our congregation. What a blessing to be able to do that. And as we navigate those things, coming back to our theme as we're singing, to remember that God is in complete and total control. He is sovereign God over all things. We can trust and have confidence that he will hold us fast. <laughs>
this time we've been able to sing songs about your support for your everlasting arms for you holding us fast for out of our sorrows we can call upon you because you live god you live and the lord jesus christ lived, jesus christ lives evermore to make intercession for us the holy spirit gives us understanding of your word and enables us to live a life that blessed that is uh, honoring to you we pray now that as we look into your word, that we would be sensitive to the Holy Spirit's leading as what we need to change to be more like Christ and to live according to your word. Please help our pastor as he preaches, as he speaks from your word, that he would honor and glorify you in what he shares with us. For in Christ's name I pray. Amen. Good morning, church. We started a series in Proverbs two weeks ago. Interrupted for Mother's Day, who, and you mothers are never an interruption. And like we'd like to continue that as we begin this morning. There's an area in Alaska called the White Pass. It's also called the Dead Horse Trail. Why? Well, I have a quote from a gentleman named Jack Newman. He was a packer on the White Pass Trail around 1897. And he said, I must admit that I was as brutal as the rest, but we were all mad, mad for gold. And we did things that we lived to forget. At times, the trail became impassable. We took the train up the White Pass Trail. I know others in here have done so. Forty miles long. And these men came from everywhere for a lust for gold. And they had horses, and they had picks, and they had shovels, and they had tents. Forty miles of trail. They found horses wherever they could find them. But these horses were not equipped for the constant physical demands, the boggy mud holes, and the slippery rocks. No one knows exactly how many animals it, that it took for the two trails that went up there. But it's estimated that about 3,000 horses died in a one-year period on the White Pass Trail. That's why it's called the Dead Horse Trail. It was a brutal journey for man and for beast alike. And I ask, what could be greater than gold? Patty and I came from a town called Greenville, Ohio. And a member of the church that we were in, his first name was John. And John's business was to trade in gold. And he had, down in a basement area of his very small house, you had to go down with a ladder. And I went down there just to visit John. I didn't know I'd be going down there. And I went down that ladder, and John sat, and I sat, and around me was more gold than I have ever seen. There was jewelry, there were necklaces, there were bars of gold, just everything you might think of. And that was John's business. Shortly after... I, we began talking, John got a phone call, so he went up the ladder, leaving me alone with all that gold. And I looked around and I said, Lord, this is nothing like what heaven will be. 
And I sat there carefully with my hands in my pockets, and I waited for John to come back. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 2 this morning. And I'd like to focus right now on verse 1 and verse 2. Proverbs 2, we begin in verse 1. My son, if you receive my words and treasure my commandments within you, so that you incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding. We began two weeks ago with the pursuit of wisdom. God said that it's greater than than all of the gold in the world. As we look at verse 1 and 2, we notice in verse 1 that you must choose attentiveness in this area. Passive listening is not enough. Over my years as a pastor, looking from here, seeing people who nod their head or struggle to keep awake, or maybe even play on their phone. Passive listening is not enough. We see multiple verbs that are used by the Lord to urge you to focus on wisdom. Verse 1 says, if you receive my wisdom. That's an important verb. It has the idea of seeking and finding and receiving. Then he says, and treasure my commands. How important it is if God gives us a command in the Bible that we obey that command. Then in verse 2, incline your ear to wisdom. If you have somebody that you want to talk to, but they're a very soft-spoken uh, speaker, maybe you'll lean forward and even turn your ear so you're able to hear what that person is saying. Incline your ear to wisdom. And then lastly, apply your heart to understanding. Not just your mind, but go to the very depths of your heart. I want to know what God is saying. The writer of Proverbs moves into verse 3, and I'll read that. Yes, if you cry out for discernment and lift up your voice for understanding. The second requirement is you must ask for it. And when he talks about lifting up your voice, in the Hebrew language, that means a loud, insistent plea for help. It's a desperate cry. It's a picture of a desperate man begging for deliverance from trouble. If you cry out for discernment so you can understand the word, and understand what's going on in our world. You must ask for it. We find wisdom when we cry out for us as we are reading the Word of God, both Old and New Testament. As you spend time in study and reading and contemplation and just taking time to carefully work through whatever verse you're in. Then in verse 4, the writer says, If you seek her, that's wisdom, as silver, and search for her as for hidden treasures. I can't imagine the desperate situation that those men and a few women went through trying to dig through the mud and the slop and the rocks to reach the top of White Pass. But you've got, to, you've got to commit yourself to a determined search for wisdom. 
I was talking with one of our young ladies this morning, and she opened her Bible and showed me a verse because she couldn't quite get a grip. And we looked at the verse, and I explained it to her, and we looked at the words, and we were careful to divide that verse so that it is understandable. That's what we ought to do every time we open our Bible. Commit yourself to a determined search of the Word of God. Then, verse 5 tells us, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Most people in our world can't figure out what's going on and they miss the opportunity to go to the Word of God who has communicated those answers. He says, then you will understand the fear of the Lord. And wisdom can be found as you search for it diligently. And once you find it, it will save you from a disaster and lead you to satisfaction. There are people that think they are wise, but they're using human wisdom. Some of them, I think, are in our government, others in our schools, others in business, and they don't realize that wisdom given by God, it does lead to satisfaction and save people from disaster. I don't know how many times I've read or I've heard online of different decisions that have been made. The person thought he was doing right, but he was not using wisdom that comes from the Word of God. Now, if you fulfill these three conditions and throw yourself into a disciplined search for wisdom, God promises you that you will find what you are looking for. Occasionally over my years in ministry, I've talked to people that say, well, I just throw my Bible down and wherever it opens, that's where I'm going to read. How scary that is. Because not every verse applies to us now. And we have to be careful to start with a book. And begin in verse 1. That's unusual, isn't it? And what follows verse 1? Verse 2. We almost have our master's degree, don't we? No, it's obvious. And you meditate and you take time. And you think about what God is saying. As you do, God will help you. To find what you are looking for. Wisdom. Verse 6. For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. And you say in your mind, well, I've never heard him. I don't know where this wisdom is coming from. Well, God has given wisdom to the writers of the word of God. And the wisdom that we find today comes from that which was written down in the Bible. I continue my reading in verse 7. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. And he is a shield to those who walk uprightly. He guards the path of justice and preserves the way of his saints. So often people today, and even some Christians, sadly, they just think they're going to let it rip and make decisions that feel good and do what they think might be right as long as they don't get caught. Business is run this way all the time. So's government. But the wisdom that God is wanting to provide for us is more than just cleverness, more than just being slick. Those with God's wisdom are upright, blameless, just, and faithful. And before we move forward, let me encourage you, it doesn't happen overnight. 
It doesn't happen over the year or over a decade. And when we think we've got enough wisdom, we find God wants to give us more so that we can apply it in our job. We can apply it in our school. We can apply it in this church. And certainly when we vote in November, we can apply the wisdom that God has given us. Just and faithful. Now the word blameless that we've seen in verse, i got to find it now. I can't find it. Oh, it's tied together with the, uh, he guards the path of your justice. That comes from the Hebrew. And it refers to total submission to that which God chooses. And we apply it and put it in our entire heart. Then he says faithful ones. That comes from the Hebrew word kethed. Those who are loyal to God with a heart of love. You can't just look at the Christian walk walk as a slam dunk, jump in here, and then go out and live like the world. You will not have the wisdom to rescue you and direct you as God's word wants to. We see in verse 9, Then you will understand righteousness and justice, equity and every good path. It comes little by little by little. When our daughter Samantha was born and our daughter Amy was born, we started out with a bottle. We didn't give them a jug and tell them to get food. We started off with a bottle, and I remember holding my firstborn right here with a little bottle, and she would, le- she would just love, and I would love on her. But as they got older, it wasn't long until all the food was available to them. But it didn't happen overnight. So it is with wisdom. It takes time to understand righteousness and justice, equity in every good path. When God's word begins to enter your heart, verse 10 says, and knowledge is pleasant to your soul, discretion will preserve you. Understanding will keep you to develop, develop, I'm sorry, deliver you from the way of evil, from the man who speaks perverse things. You see, if we lack wisdom, And when we enter into any area of life, whether it's church life, work life, school life, wherever it is, it's only by the wisdom of God that we are delivered from evil, that we know how to make decisions, we know how to be honest, we know how to be fair. It's God's wisdom that gives you a sense of right and wrong. And what's right is right, what's wrong is wrong, and that's what God's Word teaches us. And I can't just turn that a little bit and call what's wrong right. It just doesn't work. And you will be in a moral pit so fiery and so deep, and you'll say, how did I get there? The word right that we see here in verse 9, righteousness. Actions that conform to God's standards of right and wrong. Thoughts that conform. Actions that conform. Plans that conform. Directions that conform to God's standards of right and wrong. There's no sliding scale in God's eyes. The word just has been used many times. The Hebrew word means to govern decisions that reflect God's character. How you doing? Well, if you're like most people, up and down sometimes. But as a manner of life, how are you doing? 
Are you following the Lord? Is it possible to do that? The word fair was used and it means straight or uptight. Upright. If not, you will be uptight. Do nothing underhanded. Do nothing sleazy or morally questionable. Attentiveness. We've mentioned that. That is the springboard to wisdom. Practical steps I'll give you. Number one, make your ear attentive. Proverbs 2.2, 2, we've already seen that. Jesus often ended his teaching with he who has ears, let him hear. And you can have perfect hearing and not hear what God is saying to you in the Word of God. Jesus often spoke in his teaching about those who were dull of hearing. They maybe wanted to hear, but not all the time. Well, it doesn't apply to this area. Well, yes, it does. He who has ears, let him hear. And you and I will benefit from the book of Proverbs when we choose to listen actively and receptively to the Word of God. Did you ever try to give an instruction to one of your kids and their eyes were rolling around the room or they maybe were thinking about somebody else and you didn't know? You just want to choke them sometimes. Because we, they need to be listening actively and receptively. Second helper, incline your ear. Proverbs 4, verse 20. When we want to hear someone, we turn towards them, not away. We lean forward so that we can hear what they're saying because we want to communicate what you're saying is important. Incline your ear. It's a way of giving full attention. And it shows that you value the speaker when you listen. Of course, we're not hearing the Word of God. We're reading the Word of God. And it's the Spirit of God that then takes the Bible, the Word of God, and applies it to our hearts and our lives as we read, as we study, as we incline our ear. Third point, and we see that in Proverbs 2, too. Third, incline your heart. Mentally lean forward. Give your full, inten uh, full attention. Don't try to be reading the Bible while the d bulldogs are playing football. Or watching NASCAR or seeing the race on Sunday, Monday, I think it is. Um, we've got to be given carefully to the Word of God. So, number four is treasure what you hear, place a high value on it, take notes, review. Don't just say, Yeah, I've heard that before, I'm moving on. Now, he who treasures wi wisdom will act on it rather than lose its benefits. And when we're not acting upon the word of God, it'll slip away. Then I have number five. Do not forget. Proverbs 3, 1 and other verses. Do not forget what you're reading. Wisdom is so valuable to that sensible person that he wants to have it be a part of his life. Lodge it in your memory. Nothing wrong with Bible memory. Ah, uh, I'm too old. I can't memorize. Well, you knew how to get here. You know where your food's at. You can memorize. Just don't try to do it all at once. 
treasure wisdom. Do not forget it. Lodge it in your memory. Write them, as Proverbs 7 says, on the tablet of your heart. That's a sweet way to say that. On the tablet of your heart. So, I pull this all together by saying, so what? What's your decision going to be? Are you going to walk out no different than you came in? Or are you going to be momentarily challenged and then slide back? Or are you going to be one of those believers that feed on the Word of God and your life will count for eternity? Let's pray. Thank you, Father, <clears throat> how gracious you are to allow us to be together. No mistake that we have ended up in this place. I pray, Father, that the words that I shared were not just for, from me, but from you as I speak it. Challenge people today and help them to see the great benefits of wisdom in God's word. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand as we close our service in a song that reminds us of continually trusting in the Lord Jesus is a very sweet thing. and to come before you in prayer. I pray that you will go with us now from this place, that we, having looked into your word, will view it as we would look into a mirror, that we would recognize that it will show us what we need to change. Though we may not like the things that it shows us, Lord, we know that, again, you work in our lives to make us more like the Lord Jesus Christ. If we have trusted Christ as our Savior, if there's somebody here this morning, Lord, who doesn't truly know you, has not been redeemed, has not been reconciled to you, Father, that today might be the day as the Holy Spirit convicts them of their sin and draws them to you. We're thankful for the privilege that it is to serve you. Help us to be better servants of you this week. It's in Christ's name I pray. Amen.